be there looking him in the face and letting him know that uh, this isn't going away anytime soon. This is just the beginning. Relief. After nearly seven weeks of investigation, an arrest in the murders of Kaylee Gonsalves, Maddie Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. So who is Brian Koberger, the man charged with the crimes? And did he know the victims? Coming to you from Moscow, Idaho. Brian Koberger will be brought back to Idaho to answer to those murder charges. He is a 28-year-old Washington State University student who is studying criminal justice and criminal criminology just a short distance from here. Koberger is accused of murdering those four University of Idaho students last November in a house near campus. Deputies led Koberger into court in Monroe County, Pennsylvania, Tuesday morning. He's waiving extradition to Idaho, where he will face murder charges. His public defender, Jason Labar, telling me that Koberger hopes to be exonerated. Last Friday, police executed a search warrant at Koberger's apartment in Pullman near the Washington State University campus. That university is just 10 miles from Moscow, Idaho. I talked to a neighbor who lives downstairs from Koberger, and she told me she had really never met him, only to say hi, and only learned his name last Friday after that search warrant was executed. Did you ever hear anything up there or anything like that? Yeah, we, we heard, you know, we heard loud sounds during the night. Yeah. A lot of, many times. No. Yeah. Not just one sentence. So it seemed like he's a, a night person, not do a lot of things during the day, but during the night he yeah. was active. Right. To like, like clean the floor sometimes, it's vacuum, it's very loud sound. Koberger was a teaching assistant in undergrad classes at Washington State University. One student who wanted to remain anonymous told me that Koberger was a really tough grader and that the professor in the class that he was acting as a teaching assistant in would tell him things like, be nice. So they described him as being kind of standoffish. And this student told me she really only saw him in class between three and four times. Now, before Koberger moved to Washington State in August of 2022, he actually studied at DeSales University in Pennsylvania. That's where he's from. And he earned a master's degree there. He also received a bachelor's degree from DeSales. One of his undergraduate classmates wanted to remain anonymous as well when speaking with me and told me that Koberger didn't socialize with others in the program and didn't take part in activities such as the Criminal Justice Club. Koberger also took a class that other criminal justice undergraduate students took, and that was a class focused on serial killers. That class was taught by Dr. Katherine Ramsland. She still teaches it to this day. She is a renowned forensic expert, and she has been a guest on Sidebar. She's a forensic psychologist, and she has said to us that she is not making any statements to the media at this time. Meanwhile, the family of Kaylee Gonsalves is relieved by news of the arrest, but they are still grieving, as you can imagine. You know, things have changed in some aspect of it is that they have a person that they've arrested. But the loss of their daughter hasn't changed. The loss that she, you know, thing, she was murdered and, and all of those things, that hasn't changed at all. And now you have to have hope. You know, you had hope that they would get an arrest. Now you have to have hope that they're going to get a conviction, that they've done all the things that they needed to do, that they dotted their I's and crossed their T's. And they have evidence that's, that will come in and will we'll get a good hard evidence on this individual. That is attorney Shannon Gray, and he has been representing the Gonsalves family for several weeks now, helping them navigate this entire process. He said that the Gonsalves family does not know Brian Koberger. It's not somebody they recognize, but they're looking to see whether or not he has any connection to Kaylee. Now that we have a name and we have a person, uh, the family, all the families are going to be looking for connections um, between all of the victims. So, and if we find any connections between Kaylee or Maddie or Ethan or Zanna or any of those, uh, the victims in the case, um, we'll be relaying all of that information over to the Moscow Police Department. And we're going to allow the Moscow Police Department to determine if they release any information regarding those connections. And I think the Moscow Police Department is really asking from the public, now that there's a face and a name, that yeah, get as much information as you can to us about this guy, right? Uh, about his habits, things that he was doing, all that stuff, still asking for community help, so.
Uh -huh. Just because an arrest has been made, it doesn't mean that the investigation is over. Police here in Moscow are still investigating with the assistance of Idaho State Police and the FBI. And I would just, if you have, I would just encourage uh, anybody that's um, out there that's to continue with the leads and the tips to the Moscow to Police Department to, you know, to help them gather, you know, additional circumstantial evidence that might be able to help in the investigation and and those types of things. And uh, because I, I feel like it was the community that helped solve this crime. It was a community involvement. I mean, it was, you know, the guy was from Pullman, right? He was nine, nine miles away and uh, um, just over the border. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know the details of it, but I, I'd be fairly certain and confident that it was, it was uh, the community that helped solve this crime and, and helped with the leads and the tips um, in the investigation. So, Moscow police are asking anybody with information about the homicide investigation or Brian Koberg to come forward and provide that information to them, either through the tip line or by email. I'm Andy.